Now at 11, a plea to the city. It was my turn to bat when I saw them pull out guns and start shooting. A nine-year-old urges the city council to put an end to Portland's gun violence. Plus, more time to meet the state's COVID vaccine mandate. How long Oregon State employees now have to get the shot or an exemption, and later. I feel all, all parents should be able to pull their kids and put them in a school that they align with better. Parents looking into virtual charter schools hit a snag in the process why some students are being denied a transfer. Good evening and welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Laurel Porter. We begin with a city divided. We're talking about Newburgh, where the debate over controversial flags in schools continues with protests and tonight a virtual meeting. Our Mike Benner has been following the turmoil in Newburgh public schools for weeks now. And as he shows us tonight, people had plenty to say. Rush hour in Newburgh. Dozens descend on the intersection of Highway 99 and South River Street to rally against hate. We need to lift each other up. Everybody, you know. There's so much already that is hurtful in this world. We need to just be good to one another. Nobody in this crowd will argue that. They brought along Black Lives Matter and pride, flags and signs to show love. They are our community. They are our friends and neighbors and brothers and sisters. And uh, everybody has to feel welcome. Newburgh can be better. I think this showing proves that, that all that we endured this week, this community is better than that. Ty Harden Moore is referring to the Mabel Rush Elementary School staffer who showed up to work in blackface. That came to light this week. Last week, we learned that some Newburgh High School students participated in a Snapchat group chat called Slave Trade, where they joked about buying black classmates. And earlier this summer, a school board director suggested banning BLM and pride symbols in district buildings, a policy that has since been altered to images that depict support or opposition relating to a political, quasi-political or controversial topic. School should be places of learning, not ideological petri dishes for indoctrination. At a virtual public meeting Wednesday night, facilitated by the Oregon School Boards Association, plenty of people voiced their support for banning what are believed to be political symbols in the classroom. While some students may feel validated by the presence of a political agenda in the classroom, there will always be others who are marginalized by that agenda. We cannot allow our school system to normalize the marginalization of groups of children. We heard from others who are disgusted by the actions of the board members who want these symbols to disappear. The consequences of your actions will be on your hands. The blood of my peers will be on your hands. BLM and pride flags create a safe environment for students and make them feel like valued members of our community. A sentiment echoed by those who gathered in downtown Newburgh Wednesday evening. The fear amongst this crowd, though, is this. I think it'll get worse before it gets better, but it has to get better. Other, I mean, how long can any community tolerate this kind of division? You know, it just kind of self-destructs. Clearly, Newburgh is a city divided. We can tell you that the school board will meet again early next week and will, of course, stay on top of the story. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. A nine-year-old Portland girl urged city leaders to do more to stop gun violence. She told the mayor and city council members about playing with her dad and brother at Rose City Park back on July 3rd, when suddenly a group of people started shooting. The family ran for a nearby shed. We ducked behind it for less than two seconds. And as I was getting up to run farther away, a bullet shot about four to five feet to my right. Portland police report 912 shooting incidents so far this year in the city. A group of faith community leaders has launched a program they hope will guide the mayor and others to stop the gun violence. And this comes as Portland is going through a violent stretch. Police say on Tuesday they responded to seven shootings on one day, the first at two in the morning, the last at 650 in the evening. Six of the shootings you can see here marked on this map. They happened throughout northeast and southeast Portland. Two of the shootings in northeast Portland were just a few blocks apart. A seventh shooting isn't on the map because police say the victim was uncooperative and they don't know where it happened. Some shootings resulted in injuries, in others, nobody was hurt. Police don't have any reports of deaths. 
To the pandemic, more than half of Oregon state employees now have an extra six weeks to meet the state's COVID vaccine mandate. The deadline has been pushed back to November 30th for those represented by Service Employees International Union 503. This covers about 24,000 employees out of 42,000. The October 18th deadline still applies to teachers and health care workers. Also, although those state union workers may now have more time to get the shot, they still have to follow the mandate just as before. Today, Governor Kate Brown honored Washington County, Oregon's very first county to hit the 80% vaccination rate. Catherine Cook joined her in Forest Grove tonight, where county officials shared how they did it. The Forest Grove Farmers Market draws hundreds of people every week. It's one reason Washington County picked it to host one of their weekly vaccination clinics. An example of the county's community collaboration, the governor came to praise. Hi. Congratulations to the first county that made it to 80%. Oregon Governor Kate Brown congratulating Washington County Chair Catherine Harrington on a major public health milestone. Washington County hit the 80% vaccination mark earlier this month. Partnerships are really what helps our community members. On this day, one of the county's most popular vaccination clinics is in full swing. Hosted by nonprofit partner Adelante Mujeres, it offers patients a special incentive, a $50 gift certificate to the Forest Grove Farmers Market happening right outside. It's a place where many here feel safe. It's more than just providing vaccines, right? It's providing people with education and information. It's answering questions. Victor Torres Lopez and his father Alfonso just got their second dose of the vaccine. Feels great to know that uh, lots of people are getting vaccinated to stay safe, to have a great community. Victor's father tells us, yes, I've been trying to get people at work to get the vaccine here at Adelante Mujeres. That way they can be more secure. Wow, that is really amazing. For Governor Brown, it all demonstrates the county's effort to close the equity gap. In this case, making sure communities of color get vaccinated at the same rate the majority of the population does. Literally driving the mobile vans into communities, into neighborhoods, and providing the education and information and vaccinations for community members. According to state health data, two other counties have since hit the 80% mark, Multnomah and Hood River, with Lincoln County close behind. But for Washington County, being first. Do you all want a photo? Sure. Okay, why don't you turn around and Taylor take a photo, okay? Just feel special. Okay, In Forest Grove, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Well, congratulations to them. And the push for vaccine clinics comes as hospitalizations slightly decline. OHA reported 579 new COVID-19 hospitalizations. That's down slightly from 592 last week. Unfortunately, COVID-related deaths have risen with 148 reported. That's up from 120 reported the previous week. Since the pandemic began, more families have become interested in online charter schools. While demand is still high, a long-standing Oregon rule is preventing some families from having a choice. Christine Pitawanich explains. Frank Travis has three daughters. Two are in middle and high school. This year, he wanted to put them in an online charter school. Uh, the things that I really like is they have very targeted programs um, you know, math, where they'd actually teach you personal finance, balancing the checkbook, doing your taxes. But when he put in his request to his daughter's school district, he says he was denied. They were very direct and basically telling me that they're not going to let my kids go. It was, it was like they're a number and they need to keep their numbers. Allison Galvin, executive director at Oregon Charter Academy, says many families are in the same predicament. Our virtual public charter schools have seen a significant decrease in enrollment. Generally, how many families do you have kind of knocking at your door but can't enroll because of the 3% rule? We've had hundreds, honestly, hundreds. That 3% rule has been around for years in Oregon. It puts a cap on the percentage of students that can leave a district for a virtual public charter school. Some districts enforce it, others don't. But since the pandemic began, online charter school officials across the state are seeing more denials. 
we are seeing more families getting denied because of the 3% cap than historical. Um, and that's because more families are choosing virtual education. Schools haven't ever historically lost as many students to the virtual platform as they have now. Melissa Hausman is the head of school for Cascade Virtual Academy, Insight School of Oregon Painted Hills, and Oregon Destinations Career Academy. So then school districts that are really enforcing this 3% rule, does it come down to money? It probably does come down to that. And that's just because, um, you know, uh, state funding is, is precious for families and that's the way that schools fund their educational platforms. Whatever the reason, Hausman, Galvin and Travis all agree on one thing. I feel all, all parents should be able to pull their kids and put them in a school that they align with better. Travis says he was eventually able to enroll his kids in Oregon Charter Academy because of some miscommunication. Charter school representatives I spoke to say they hope state lawmakers revisit a rule they say is outdated and prevents families from having a choice. Christine Petawanich, KGW News. Now let's get you caught up on your other top headlines tonight. Salem police say they're investigating a deadly shooting from late this morning. Police say they found a man near 39th Avenue and D Street Northeast who'd been shot several times. He died at the hospital. Police say they've detained several people and don't think there's a threat to the public. We now know the name of the suspect police say was involved in a deadly shooting outside a Walmart in Gresham. He is 26 year old Daniel Hipschman of Portland. He's accused of shooting and killing a man in the parking lot of the Walmart on West Powell Boulevard by Southeast 182nd. This happened Monday evening. According to court documents, a road rage altercation led up to the shooting. Campfire restrictions have now been lifted in the Mount Hood National Forest. That takes effect tomorrow. The ban was in place during our dry summer months, but the recent rain we had, as well as cooler and shorter days, mean it's no longer needed. That being said, officials warn that vegetation is still dry and people need to be careful around their campfire.